Welcome back to lecture 2.2, where we're going to talk about pressure. So we defined pressure last time. So the pressure in the system is force over area, or force per unit area, right? and that the units of pressure were newtons per meter squared, which was called a pascal. Okay? So pascal is the SI unit of force, I mean of pressure. <clears throat> Newton is the SI unit of force. And uh, so let's get a, just a little bit more familiar, a little bit comfortable with the ideas of pressure. <clears throat> so for example, we can think about atmospheric pressure, okay? So this is going to be atmospheric pressure, okay? So this atmospheric pressure is the pressure I experience in the atmosphere, the pressure of the atmosphere pushing on me, okay? So at sea level, So give or take, you know, Vancouver, right? So at sea level, atmospheric pressure is roughly 101,300 ah units pascal, or 1.013 times 10 to the 5 pascals, okay? 100,000, 101,300 pascals. Okay, this is also called, colloquially, one atmosphere, one ATM, right? So this is often referred to as an atmosphere because this is the pressure of the atmosphere. Okay, well, let's get some used to this a little bit. So what does this really mean? So let's imagine that I have an area of two square meters. That's roughly the surface area of your body, okay? So the surface area of your body is roughly two square meters, okay? So what's the force that the atmosphere presses on you with, okay? So the force is simply going to be the pressure, 1.01, .01, times 10 to the 5 pascals. Remember, there are newtons per meter squared, so times 2 meters squared. Okay, so this is 2.026 times 10 to the 5 newtons. Okay, or roughly 2 times 10 to the 5 newtons. All right. So what does that mean? Remember that force is mass times acceleration, right? So if you were to imagine having this weight push down on you, for example, uh, inside from gravity, like so imagine having a weight pushing down on your on the two square surface uh, two square meter surface area of your body in gravity, right? So what kind of mass would this be pushing on you? Right? So you can say, well, this is simply the mass is the force two times ten to the five newtons, right? Divided by, let's say it call it ten meter per second squared, and it works out this is 20,000 kilograms, right? Or 20 metric tons. 20 tons of force from the atmosphere pushing down on you. Why are you not crushed? So take a moment, even pause if you need to. Stop and think about why is it that you're not crushed by the atmosphere? 
The answer, of course, is that because it's hydrostatic. What that means is it's the same force pushing on you as is inside pushing out. Right? So this is the balance of forces. Right? So this is hydrostatic pressure. Now, you know, what if instead you had, of, um, you had this column, imagine instead of a, a, like a 20-ton, you know, I don't know, I don't know what, you, what weighs 20 tons. Some number of trucks, probably. Um, probably two, two-ish trucks, I don't know. So you can imagine also creating a situation, uh, which we'll develop here now, so that we can measure the pressure, okay? So how do we imagine measuring pressure? Well, we should start by thinking about the weight of something pushing down on you. For example, imagine I had a column of liquid, okay? So imagine I had a column of liquid, and I want to calculate that, let me just make a, an imaginary surface here, right? I have some area A, I have some pressure pushing down on you from the atmosphere, right? So the atmosphere pushes down on a column of liquid. Imagine, say, for example, uh, a graduated cylinder with some water in it, or the gl a glass of water. That's actually a really good idea. Imagine a glass of water. So you have the atmosphere pushing down on the water, but what's the pressure at the bottom, right? Let's say, what's the pressure at the bottom of a glass of water, okay? Well, you have the atmospheric pressure pushing down on you, right? But you also have the force due to this weight of the water, right? So the force of the water pushing down on you is the mass of the water times g of, again, right? Same as a, before. But, you know, we would like to calculate the, the mass in terms of, of the other parameters, for example, the area and the height of the water, right? So this is going to be the density times the volume times g. And the, uh, the volume of a cylinder is going to be the area times the height. Okay. All right, that's nice because now we're going to imagine the, the pressure felt here, right? The pressure felt there is going to be the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down on it, right? Plus the pressure from the the, the column of water itself. Okay, so let's call this. Uh, yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> so this is going to be the pressure of the atmosphere plus well this force divided by the area, right? Well, the area just drops out, so this is rho g. H. So now we have a, a, a pressure which depends on the height, right? Now this could be water, but it could also just be the air, right? So the density of air pushing on you. So now we can actually use this to, to, to fabricate a device for measuring pressure. So the device for measuring pressure is called a barometer. It measures the bars, right? A barometer, measure, you know, the unit of pressure. Um, oh, did I tell you? Did I tell you? Uh, well, we can get to it. Um, so just as a, as a reference, by the way, since I mentioned the bar, so, so the, um, I said that 101,300 pascals, right, is one atmosphere. So one atmosphere is 101,300 pascals. So this is pretty close to 100,000 pascals 
which is the definition of one bar. Okay, So a bar and an atmosphere are about 1% difference, but it's a nice round number. So that's why we often think about uh, bars in SI units. It's, a, it's 100,000 pascals. So a barometer is something that measures the bars and measures the pressure. All right, so we can actually now fabricate a barometer. So has anyone ever made a barometer? So I made one with my my uh, seven-year-old this summer during the during the stay-at-home time. So uh, you can actually take and imagine filling a, a surface with water. So imagine taking a straw, pinching it on one end, and then you you actually tip it over into another volume of water. Okay, so. You had the water level uh, filled all the way up to this, and when you when you when you tipped it over, it actually some of the water drained out. Okay, so some of the water drains out of your of let's say your of your straw here, and so the the pressure here is zero. It really pulls a vacuum. Okay. And you have the atmospheric pressure pushing down on this. And so really, you can see now that there's a balance which has to do with the height of the water, right? So how high would this, wa would this be, for example, uh, at sea level? Well, instead of... Let me try that again. Instead of water, barometers are actually typically use mercury. And the reason why is because mercury is very dense. Well, that's one of the reasons. So mercury is very dense. So it's 13,900 kilograms per meter cubed. So if I had mercury here, how high would this mercury be at sea level? So how high, and what I mean here is H, right? How high would the mercury, so let me just spell that out, mercury, how high would the mercury be at sea level? Okay, take a second, pause the video, and work that out, okay? So uh, if you have questions, well, actually we can do that we can work this one out. I'm going to try this where I don't work out the, the, all the numbers in the pre-recorded videos. We'll work out that number in class. Okay, so how high would the mercury be at sea level? The answer is 760 millimeters. Or 0 0.76 meters. Okay, so this became a standard unit of pressure. So one millimeter of mercury is called a tor. Okay, so if you if you measure in tor, right, it's the one tor is the amount of pressure it takes to displace mercury, a single millimeter in a barometer. And one, one tor is equal to 135 pascals. Okay.
Okay, for scale, we said Van City was it about one atmosphere, right? So 101,300 pascals. Um, imagine you were flying in a, in a jet at 10,000 kilometers above their surface. What would the pressure be? So what's the pressure outside the jet when you're flying? Uh, everyone probably knows that the pressure is lower outside the, the jet. You see these videos of things being sucked out through the, but it's not really that extreme. The pressure is approximately 0.2 bar. Okay, It's only about the fifth uh, the, the pressure that it is at Earth's surface. So a, a pretty simple mechanical pump. In my lab, can pretty easily get to um, 10 to the minus 3 tor. So that's 10 to the minus uh, 1. So 10 to the minus 3 tor is 10 to the minus 1 pascals. So just kind of um, not as simple as, say, an aquarium pump, but a, a real proper scientific pump uh, can be 10 to the minus 3 <clears throat> tor, 10 to the minus 1 uh, pascals. So maybe it's, maybe it really should be, yeah, that's about right. So um, when, when we talk about a high vacuum pump, so for example, uh, if you've ever worked in a lab and had a turbo pump, for example, be about 10 to the minus 6 tor, 10 to the minus 4 pascals. So we often think in tor in my lab just because. But for example, if you go to Dr. LeBlanc's lab where she has what they call ultra high vacuum, UHV, that's like 10 to the minus 11 tor, 10 to the minus 9 pascals. So this is really, really, really uh, low pressure. And the deepest regions of space right, where there's absolutely nothing, you know, is roughly 10 to the minus 11 pascals. Deep space, not near Earth space, not near, uh, uh, near a satellite, for example. To go to the opposite end of the spectrum, a cylinder of gas, a cylinder of uh, compressed gas in the lab, Be about 200 bar. So that's like 10 to the 7 pascals. And let me just uh, take this moment to, to think about this. You know, really, a compressed cylinder, I'd say, is one of the most dangerous things that you have in your lab, uh, if you've ever been to a lab. Uh, even, you know, just a, a party balloon cylinder can be an extraordinarily dangerous object. And you can work that out because you can think of this, this uh, force. Right? Think about this 200 bars, like you say, it's one bar on the outside and 200 on the inside, or 201. The pressure difference is 200 bar. Imagine, you know, an orifice, and uh, let's say um, the head of that, that cylinder is, you know, this big 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, for example. Go ahead and work out what that force on that, on that, on that say, valve is. You know, these can be extraordinarily dangerous objects at high pressure. Last year, I had a student uh, tell me that he had worked in an oil rig uh, out in one summer and had seen, you know, a massive explosion just because they had pumped high-pressure nitrogen 
into one of these uh, oil wells. Um, so the highest pressures that we can make on, on Earth, though, are actually called diamond, um, diamond anvil cells. So they actually take, basically the idea is you can take a pretty giant force, but put it at the, put, um, apply a force, apply a force, right? And you can actually make the area quite small here and put your sample quite, you know, between there. So you can actually quite apply quite a large pressure because you have a small uh, area. And finally, the center of the sun, all that gravity. Oops, I forgot to tell you what the diamond anvil cell. About 10 to the 11 pascals. 10 to the 11 pascals, or 10 to the 6 bar. Center of the sun. 10 to the 11 bar. Mind-boggling, mind-boggling pressure. Okay, so the question you might think though is, okay, so let's say I take my barometer, I can measure the pressure uh, at sea level, and I move it to Edmonton, and I can measure the, the pressure again. Now, the question is, let's say it was a different temperature in Vancouver than it was in Edmonton. How does this system change with temperature? Should I worry about the temperature dependence of the, of the mercury? Wouldn't that change, for example, the density? Now, <clears throat> next time, lecture 2.3, we're going to talk about temperature. Until then. <laughs>